Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, if you guys follow along on my Instagram, you would know that lately I've been working a lot here. This is my shop. You guys have maybe seen the shop and I love this thing, man. I've done, you know, a couple walkthroughs of it. It's a great shop and uh, with it is my property. And this is the farmhouse. This is where I raise my kids. And uh, yeah, started my journey with my wife, my life, my business, everything, right? Right here. Um, and if you guys are really OG followers, you would know about four years ago, I started a remodel in the house and it kind of just went cold. It dropped off. And man, every video, somebody says, Kyle, what's going on with the farmhouse remodel? Are we going to see a finish? Is there going to be closure? And here's the deal. Let's go inside. I'll show you what the update is here on the farmhouse remodel. And I'll kind of go over what's going on with that because so many have asked. I figured why not just go ahead and talk about it and make a quick video. All right, welcome to the farmhouse, guys. This is the inside. I've never really shared this, and that's just because it's always been personal. Um, but as you'll kind of look around, there's not a whole lot going on. I got piles of furniture. I've got beds. Um, I've got piles of just, I don't know, stuff. I think this is all going to be for a garage sale. And that's because I have not lived here in the farmhouse now for almost four years. Hence why we have not done any remodeling. In fact, as you notice here, we got windows without trim. Um, that's because about four, five years ago, actually, I made the decision to come through and I was going to start remodeling the home again. I had all the windows outside done. I had all the siding replaced. Um, I house wrapped the exterior and I was going room by room to gut the insides, do a better job air sealing and just overall make this a more comfortable home. And so I was in the middle of this room, which if I step in here, this was a bedroom, and then also the bathroom. These were the remodeling projects that are part of a YouTube video playlist if you go way back, and it just, it died off. Good Lord, I think every video after that remodel video, people were asking, when are we gonna get another, another video of the farmhouse remodel? And to be honest, I wasn't interested in doing it. And let me tell you why we have not lived here for four years. The gist is this, my wife is a principal and my kids were going to the same school district that my wife is a principal in. The problem is that's about 40 minutes from here and every morning my kids would have to get up early, they would drive all the way to the school, they would wait around till school started because my wife had to be there early as an administrator. They would go to school and then they would also have to stick around if my wife had any after school duties. It became a super daunting task. And to be honest, I didn't like the idea of my kids, you know, all winter long, taking a 40 minute drive. That just increased their chances of having an accident or anything like that. So we made the decision, all right, we're gonna buy a house. We're gonna get a small house right next to the school. And we're gonna live there until we decide either that was a good idea and we buy something that we really like, or we realize it was a mistake and we come back to the farmhouse. So we never sold it. I have my shop here, all my equipment stored here, my tools. I wanted to keep that shop because it meant a lot to me. The problem is that meant I had a house that I didn't know what to do with. I didn't want to rent it to somebody because maybe I wanted to come back. I didn't want to sell it because I needed the property. So it sat here for four years and I definitely didn't want to spend time and money on a remodel that I didn't need done. So why have I now got back to this remodel? Well, it's because I'm gonna sell this property. I've realized it's time to pass it on. This is an awesome piece of property. Um, and a lot of people are gonna say, well, what about your shop, Kyle? It's an awesome shop, it's great. I can build a new shop. I plan on building a new shop. And in fact, hopefully you guys stick around because it's in the works. It's not gonna happen you know, tomorrow, but it's actually already in the works. I'm working on securing property and planning my future shop build. Please don't come at me and everybody in the comments want to know how much is it going to sell for? What are you listing it for? Listen, I'm going to put the listing up when it's ready. When this remodel is done, um, I'm going to refresh all the paint on the inside, get all the trim up on the windows, finish the bathroom, finish the bedroom. And honestly, this is going to be one heck of a property for somebody. I've got my shop, which is the 60 by 88 shop insulated, heated, you know, all that good stuff. You guys have seen that. I've got a 40 by 60 shed that he's got concrete floor. It's built on a concrete wall. It's, it's an awesome storage building. I've got the horse stalls. I've got full concrete driveway. 
um, mature trees, you know, you name it, that big red timber frame barn. And to be honest, someday I want to build myself my own barn dominium. And I realize that it's never going to happen if I also have this property. So I have to let it go. And with that, I wanted to make this video because, geez, I've been getting blown up by people wanting to know what's going on with the farmhouse remodel ever since I stopped it. And if you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I've started this again. I did not record this. Greg and I had some rain days. I knew that I was going to be selling this. I said, Greg, let's get over there. Let's get this drywall up. So we drywalled. I've been working on mudding. In fact, that's what I'm doing today is putting a second coat on. And then just yesterday, actually, a uh, buddy came over and we set this uh, Sterling tub shower, which, by the way, I've set a dozen or so tubs. This was by far the best tub shower I've ever set. It went together beautifully, no caulk. And I love the way that the joints are hidden back here. So you don't really see them. It just looks like a design. And anyway, nice and solid. It went together easy. But now what I need to do is finish the mudding. So I figured let's go ahead. I'm going to do some mudding. I've got some corners to mud. I got some flat joints to mud. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do that. And we'll turn this into something and hopefully show you guys the rest of this process as much as I can when when able. So let's get into this. It's my Sunday and I don't want to be here all day. Let's pre fold it. Look how rigid this makes this thing. Okay, once we have this whole corner filled in, then we're going to take our corner bead that's already bent up, and stick it in that corner, and then I'm just going to run my hand right down it, kind of pressing it in. This top is up here in the mud. And we're going to squeeze out the excess. So there you go. We're pushed into the mud. We've got a nice clean corner. And now that joint is done, ready to dry. And then we can put on a top coat over the sides. Okay, now right here on this outside corner, I'm gonna use metal corner bead. And uh, I, I like metal. Some guys will use like the plastic or whatever. And yes, I, I used LSLs here on this wall just because I wanted it nice and straight. And I'm not gonna bother with putting drywall here because this is gonna be like solid mud by the time I do this. And the mud is going to stick really well to all this um, textured LSL. So I don't think I need to do drywall here. I think it's just a waste. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to use some ring shank drywall nails. We don't want to over push this in because then we lose our mud bed. Also, another thing I do here, I'm going to be putting this corner bead up top. I go ahead and I put a uh, 45 on this. That's way when it comes together, it's not about, you know, the quirk, the craftsmanship and doing a miter. It's about keeping this available for tape. That if this extended all the way out to the point, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be as good of a, uh, sorry, a mud bed. So that's what I, I also do here with these guys. Okay, so there's the corner bead up here at the top. So I just do the miter so that this bead here on the edge is proud. So you can kind of see at the top, this is a little bit higher, so that sticks out. And that allows when your, your uh, tape knife to go on here, it's going to fill this with mud. So that's what I'm saying. From this side to this side, this whole thing is going to be filled with mud. There's really no need for this to be drywall. It's going to be 
perfectly fine. Now that I got that all uh, beaded with corner bead, I'm good to go ahead and start doing this taping. All right, got all that money done. Corner beads, they always get a little bit messy, but that little bit of over mud on the corners, you just wait till it dries and we'll knock that off. One thing I kind of got ahead of myself and didn't show you guys was around the tub. What I always do, you can buy some trims that go on the drywall, you mud it and then you peel it off and it's clean. But what I do is I just go ahead and fill this up with mud. I use tape right along this. And then when I'm done, I will actually put a little bead of caulk around this entire tub and it should be just good. But we got all these joints done, all the corner bead done, and now this room is taped. So this is the first coat. Uh, what I always do, I think you want to do, is we're going to use the green bucket first. This is all purpose. I do believe there's a little bit more glue in this. And I use this for the first coat, and then we'll come back in with the blue lid, which um, is more of like a finished coat. And we'll start doing our top coats, try to get it all smooth and nice. So we'll just keep rolling this right into next day we're here, which is top coat. Before I start putting any more mud on, I need to go around and I need to check, make sure that everything is smoothed out so that there's no chunks. Because when I go to put, start putting my finishing coats over, if there's any bumps, it's going to show up in my mud and then I've got more staining to do. So, yeah, just like that right there. A little bit of prep time does make it a lot easier. So it's just as simple as kind of running your, your tool up the joints, up everything, and just making sure it's flat. All right, I am done with uh, top coating here for now. What, well, I guess first top coat. What I did was I ran one side of all my corners. So I ran all the left side, that way I know. And then I also ran the ceiling side of the joint at the ceiling and wall, as well as I fanned out these butt joints by putting one coat kind of on each side, leaving this middle basically untouched. And that's gonna get topped on the next time around when I do the right side of all my corners and the bottom side of my ceiling. As well as, you know, I'll check out the screw holes. I probably don't have to do another coat, but those are pretty easy. And, you know, the last thing you want is to see a screw when the painter comes through. So we'll probably hit those, hit the, uh, I mean, tape beds are really easy, but we'll fan those out one more time, hit these butt joints. And this is looking pretty good here. Okay, this is the no, no coat corner and you'll notice I coated the left side anyway and it looks to me like this was a good decision one coat over top looks like it's going to be money and this side has not been coated and you can just see the tape a little bit more I think that this is going to be perfect so we'll come back through clean up these corners we'll hit the other side and then I think we're going to be good to go All right, so the bedroom is very close to completion. I've just got probably to go around with a sander and kind of hand check all the joints and then hit anywhere that I feel like could use another coat. But this is, to me, this is almost ready to sand and paint uh, and then do the trim. Here in the bathroom, I just spent the morning doing another top coat and I'll probably do the same thing here, go around like I know my outside corners right here could definitely use another coat. 
to kind of feather this out more. My butt joints will need more work. That is uh, something that always bothers me when you can see them. And specifically, this and this butt joint, the way when you walk in the bathroom, this light from the window is gonna shadow any sort of imperfection in this wall. You're gonna see that. So these are very important to make sure. Like you can kind of see the shadow line a little bit. What I tried to do is on this one, I built out the side and I'm trying to build out the back side specifically because that is where the shadow line needs to be. If this is sticking out and proud of this back side, the light is gonna create a shadow and man, I just can't have that. So I'm working on trying to fix that. Otherwise, I think it's pretty darn good. You can see these corners. I'm still really happy with these corners. One top coat. So I know it says no coat, but I did it anyway. And man, I think they're looking good. They're gonna sand up real nice and be some really good corners. So anyway, I think I've got one more day of mudding in here and then it will be on to sanding and getting prepped for paint. And then this right here, along with 31 other windows in the house, those are all gonna need to get trimmed. So that's what I'm gonna move to as soon as this is ready for paint. Cause I'm not doing the painting. I got a friend who is a painter who's gonna come and do all the entire house, it will all get painted, walls and trim, it's gonna look good. And I'm gonna be doing all new carpet upstairs and then in a couple rooms downstairs as well as, I don't know what I'm doing here yet, probably some large format tile to truly, you know, to really make this a look a little bit more modern and people come in here and be like, dang, that's a nice new bathroom. So I'm getting out of here for today, we'll be right back tomorrow. All right, the time has come now to sand uh, the drywall mud. And I always say, you don't have to be a good mudder, you just have to be a good sander when it comes to drywall, because if you put too much mud on, you can always sand it off. Um, but you gotta do a good job sanding, otherwise you will see it after the paint is up. So I've got a orbital sander, so this is just like a little disc sander. I shouldn't say orbital, uh, well, it kind of is, but I like this because it's big and flat, so you can get a flat sand. So these are nice, these little blocks. They're kind of soft and mushy and they're comfortable to use. You can get into corners and crevices and things like that, but you can also gouge um, and not do as flat a job. This kind of forces the wall to be flat. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do is just, I'm just going to take this over the joint and I'm just going to kind of lightly sand. And this is just going to take off all the high points. And then what I like to do is just come in here on the edge and just feather out the mud edge. So that way, when it's painted, you never see it. So that's what we're going to do. And hopefully, these butt joints are going to look good. Absolutely despise drywall painting. Oh, it's going to get dusty in here real quick. So I'm not going to leave my expensive camera in here. Sanding is just sanding. Uh, make sure it's smooth, make sure you have no edges or um, groove lines, that nothing is sticking out like screws or tape, and you're probably gonna be pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the sanding done, and then once the sanding's done, I'll be ready to install trim in these rooms and get prepared for paint. Now it's time to put these window trims in, and the way we did this, we did a pre-assembly. So now what we can do is we're gonna be able to just put this in here. Now let me grab this window trim. All right, so here is our pre-assembled window casing with jam extension, and this is gonna go in here like so, okay? Now, because these old houses are not perfect, it's never going to be perfect on all sides because you're either probably gonna have, there's just not a perfect wall here. These aren't true two by fours. So I could take the time and I could rip each individual board to exact dimension, that's a lot of work. I take the averages and then this is gonna get caulked and painted. 
So I'm gonna put some uh, Sashko Big Stretch in there and that'll be fine. That's not a huge gap, but if you look, this thing moves around. So what I'm going to do, we'll set this to the side, is I'm gonna take some screws and they're going to act as my shims. So if I flush the end, the back side of my screw in line with the outside of the window frame, that will act as a shim for the window so that when I fasten it, it will be solid. I don't remember where I saw this, somewhere on social media, I saw somebody do this and it was like, oh my God, that is amazing. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it for now. On. Make sure that these are flush. And what I like to do is I like to go in the middle of the window and then I like to go in the middle again, top and bottom. And I like using a screw because I can back it out if I go too far or suck it in just a little bit more if it's too, uh, too tight when I put the window in. Okay, so that's just flush. It's close to flush with that outside. So now that I have those, and I'm not doing the bottom because the guys that installed these windows put them all the way down to the ground. So they're actually pretty tight. So now I can take my window casing jam extension. Because I glued, screwed, and biscuit jointed these, they're darn strong. Take our finish nail. Alright, and now we have a nice trim window ready for caulk and finished paint. And because I put those fasteners in all at the same dimension around the pruner, and I fastened this in, now the reveals around the window are consistent and it was very easy. A lot easier than having to shim behind this and get it all prepped. The screws, they just make it easy.